So first of all, I want to say that um, the purpose of Bitcoin and the objective of Bitcoin is to, to be non-sovereign, to not be controlled by any government. Because the fact is, the government did mismanage our monetary and fiscal system. That is why we're in this mess we are in today. All right. The, what happened to FTX is what is the current legacy system of a what 10% reserve? I think in the US it's 0% reserve. They're not even required to hold their money in the banks. And that's why if you look at the collapse of all these uh, Celsius, FTX, Alameda, uh, Voyager, they're all centralized. And that's the basic problem. Government is dipping their hands into a fiscal and monetary system that they know nothing about. Bitcoin is the purest form of money that is sovereign to the person, not to the government. Because as we know, people are fallible, people make mistakes, people abuse money. The government does not protect the people. The government protects the banks. The banks make the money, not the people. Bitcoin is going to give us the freedom we need. And that's why it should be legal tender eventually. So there's still the eventually part to it. You guys are talking about crafting laws so that we can use Bitcoin. Here's the fact. With or without laws, Bitcoin is being used for transactions right now. As a matter of fact, if there were zero laws, Bitcoin will be used to transact and exchange value. Perfect example, when the banking system, the government system failed na in Ukraine because of the war, do you know what people were using to buy cars to be able to move around? Bitcoin. A journalist that was there that was stuck couldn't get out. He couldn't go to the bank because there's no bank. Everything was closed. Everything was bombed out. He used Bitcoin to be able to buy a car to get out of the country. And that's what he used in the entire time he was in Ukraine. If you look at what happened to Russia, as much as I agree with the United States for freezing the U.S. reserves, in reality, that is a big problem when you have a country with that much power. Where they couldn't hold, uh, Russia couldn't hold U.S. dollars. What they did is they moved to Bitcoin. And that is what happens. And now, when you talk about the volatility of Bitcoin, my point is this. I'd rather get Bitcoin that's volatile upwards than a fiat currency that's stable going down. The Philippine peso will go down, probably to 100 pesos to the dollar. And there's nothing we're going to be able to do. So I always tell people, just put your money in Bitcoin. At least there in five years. Let's see where the peso is and let's see where Bitcoin is. So the law is not meant to help Bitcoin be adopted. Honestly, I think the law is meant so that governments can take advantage and participate in the Bitcoin revolution that's happening. Okay, so the only way to be able to verify the information of everyone is, of course, through the government of the country they live in. The problem is not the blockchain or Web3 or NFTs. The problem is the onboarding process. It's still a flawed onboarding process we have, where it's so easy to fabricate information, you cannot, easy, you cannot verify the sanctity of any of the information given. Do you know how easy it is to get a driver's license even if you don't know how to drive? Imagine putting that on an NFT, verifying that you can drive when in reality, you didn't even pass the driving test. That is the basic problem. That's why I don't believe we should put it in an NFT at this time in the Philippines, unless there is a way to be able to onboard the information and verify the information before it gets to become immutable on the blockchain. I don't think the Philippine government is conducive to when it comes to crypto adoption because of this. To become conducive for adoption of crypto, there are two things that I will require for the government to have. Number one, knowledge. Uh, it is proven that most governments don't know anything about crypto. I have seen the U.S. Congress talk about cryptocurrency, trying to regulate it with zero knowledge. It's like trying to regulate something that you have no idea what you're regulating. So it was ridiculous listening to them talk about cryptocurrency, a technology they don't understand. What more the Philippines, number one. So knowledge is not there. So if that was the soil to make something conducive, that's already lacking. The next ingredient that's needed is cohesiveness. Unfortunately, in the Philippines, it is not cohesive. The DICT is doing their own thing, BSP is doing their own thing, SEC is doing their own thing, and Malacanang is doing their own thing. Everyone's doing their own thing. Nobody understands or talks to the other department. 
in a cohesive manner. And because of those two reasons, I don't think the environment right now is actually conducive uh, for crypto adoption. But in time, it will be. But I have to commend the BSP because I believe the BSP is ahead of the game in terms of crypto knowledge and crypto adoption. That's why we're doing better than most countries.